Hello, I'm Lowell Martin, and this is MCC Today. Am I handsome? On today's show, we have Dr. Laura Collum, Dr. Laura Lewis, and Kim Rush. You're going to want to watch this. We have a lot of new information for you. Thank you to the teachers for encouraging me when I wasn't sure where to start. For seeing my potential, even when I didn't. For inspiring me to reach farther and try harder. Thank you, MCC. You helped me change my future. Find your wings at MCC. And we are here with the phenomenal Dr. Laura <laughs> Collum. How are you doing? I'm good. How about you? I'm doing well. Now, I have known you a number of years. Yes. How long, if you don't mind me asking, how long have you been here at MCC? Almost 25 years. Okay, because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm on my 27th, I believe. So. Okay, it's a long time. long time. Long time. Now, your official title is Associate Vice President of Nursing and Health Education. That's correct. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, you're in charge of mainly, I mean, well, nursing, which is the LPN program, the RN program, but then all of our other health ed programs. Right. So, the nursing division is our ADN programs, our PN program and then healthcare assisting, okay. and then the other health ed programs. Okay. All of our we have nine health ed programs. And so ADN is a, a associate, associate degree, degree nursing. nursing, and that's what we used to call LPN or RN. RN. Now that's the, uh, that's what we used to call RN. Right. So the PN practical nursing. That's right. That used to be LPN. That's correct. Okay. That's okay. correct. Okay. And so what is the practical difference, if you don't mind me asking, between the PN and the ADN program? The practical nursing program is a one-year certificate program. Okay. And so the graduates of that program, their scope of practice is just not as as broad as okay. um, as the, the registered nursing Okay. Graduate, our associate now, degree graduate. Now, most students who come, they are, or most students who want to get into either of those programs, there are a number of um, uh, prerequisites that they have to have taken. And you said, it, you know, and it all, also depends on their ACT scores. Right. So, for um, our associate degree program, if students have an 18 ACT, then technically their only prerequisite courses are AMP 1 and 2. Okay. They can be admitted with a 17 ACT, but they have to have AMP 1 and 2 and other gen ed courses out of the way. Um, okay. We do recommend that students have as many gen ed courses that are listed in our curriculum either way as possible. They just, will have to take them at right, some point. Right, they will. Right. It just helps them, number one, rank higher because we have a competitive admission process, and two, will make their load a little bit lighter when they actually are admitted into the program. And that's going to be important right. a little bit later right. on. Because, it is. You know, I, and it, I tell students this all the time. It's a wonderful program. I highly recommend the program. But it's, it's very there's a lot to it. Though, yeah, yes. there's a lot yes. to it. So get ready. Right. You know. Uh, so yes, I, I, if if you can get anything out of the way, <laughs> yes, you will want to go ahead and yes. get it out of the way. Now, how many students do you typically uh, take in in the fall and in the spring? Now so, you say you you accept students in both fall and spring for correct. both programs. That is correct. Okay. So for our ADN program. We generally take around 100 students in the fall okay. in two separate cohorts. We have a full-time day cohort that we admit every fall, and we have a full-time evening weekend cohort that we admit in the fall. And it's a smaller group. It'll okay. have about 30 students in it. So usually about 70 in days and 30 in evenings. In the spring semester, we admit our full-time day program as well, and that is when we also admit our accelerated program. So the accelerated program is for LPNs and paramedics who have at least a year of experience, okay. and it's a three-semester program. And so the LP, this is for the LPN and paramedics to become RNs? That's correct. Okay, okay. That's correct. Okay. So we um, generally, we take 30 to 40 students in that track, 
fact, and, and those students follow that evening weekend schedule as well. It works well for that group because many of them are trying to work and go to school. And then we'll also admit our traditional day group, again, anywhere from 60 to 75 students is, is typical. Okay, and it's, it's very important for people to get the information about the programs because there are a number of things that they need to do and to have uh, available to you because I think, am I mistaken in that you go basically by a point system? Is that how you do when you're looking at uh, uh, candidates for the programs? Right, so there are several steps that applicants have to go through. There, there are application deadlines that have to be met in order to be considered, um, okay. and this is for both for ADN and PN. So right now, our spring deadline is October the 1st, and our fall deadline is March the 1st. Okay. Um, by the application deadline, students have to have an MCC admission application on file, we have to have their ACT score, and we have to have all transcripts from everywhere they've attended. Mm -hmm. And then after the deadline passes, those students will get a letter in the mail about the next steps to be okay. considered. And they have to sign up for an information session. Mm -hmm. That's an in-person session that we that we do um, where we go over a lot of you know program information, and then they have to take the HESI admission assessment exam, okay. and that's done through our career center. Does that cost anything? It does. For them? It's sixty dollars okay. to take, um, and and their scores are good for a year. So if they took it in the previous semester, they don't have to retake it, you know, unless they want to. Um, that's used in the admission process, but we don't require a certain score on the HESI to, to be admitted. So when we say that we have a competitive admission process, we're looking at their overall GPA, their ACT score, the courses that they've had and their grades in those courses, and how well they did on the the HESI test. So all the students get points for all those things, mm -hmm. and that's how they're ranked and it's really like blind because you don't it's know blind, who they are. Right, you have no right. clue. We do You're not. just looking at the what they've done, the points, That's and right. stuff like there that. There are no names on okay. for the voting members of the admissions committee. They have no names on the spreadsheet, so we're just strictly going by who's got the most points. Okay. So if if you've got a student who is uh, um, sitting at home, maybe they're about to graduate from high school, and they're wondering what they what what can they do? What kind of career can they do? What um, qualities do you think should a student have to get into nursing? If they're saying they have no, you know, they're, they're, they're kind of being pulled, you know, they don't really they know. They don't really know. What but they they're, they're like, do. maybe something in healthcare, but I don't know what I want to do. What kind of, you know, would you say, okay, if you do this, if you do this, if you do this, I think you'd make a good nurse. So you have to like people and want to be around Number people. One. I mean, that is important. And a lot of times, you know, we'll say we need, you know, caring. That's one of the things that that's one of our student learning outcomes mm -hmm. that we measure in a way, although it can be, you know, challenging right. to measure it. Um, because you see people at both their best and that's their right, worst. That's right. That's okay. right. So, yeah. and, and we know that we can't always, but I mean, measure caring in a student, um, but certainly it does help, I think, if somebody just has that kind of nurturing, caring nature. But I think, you know, liking people. <laughs> <laughs> and like, you know, I like, I like people, but I blood, mm -mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just one of these people. I cannot, I cannot do it. Uh, you know, so I guess you would have to be okay with, with, with blood and, But you know. to, some of those are kind of learned experiences, Probably. you know, they are. So, um, and I think to just a maturity level that will allow the student to commit the time because it, it is a significant time commitment. Nursing school is, is it's, it's stressful and there's a lot being you know thrown at students. Um, we certainly as faculty try to help navigate that process for the students and guide them um, to the best of our ability, but it's, it, it it's, it's intense. So. But then once you graduate, and once you take your boards, you can go anywhere with this degree, right? That's right, right? that's right. 
That's right. And you can do a lot of different things. To me, that's one of the great things about nursing is because there are so many opportunities for just where you can work and, and for career advancement. There's tons of opportunities in nursing for career advancement. Well, listen, I want to thank you for being on today and I want to have you on again. Okay. I want to continue All this right. conversation. Okay. But I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for having me. We'll be right back. Not essential. Never let anyone tell you that again. Never doubt your abilities to make a difference. How do I know this about you? Because I'm a teacher. I am the one who will push you harder and farther than you could have ever imagined. Teach you things that you never thought possible. And if you will give me 100%, then I will stand shoulder to shoulder with you and together we will change your future. MCC. We are here with the wonderful Miss <laughs> Dr. Laura Lewis. How are you doing? I'm doing very Thank you. One of my favorite people on campus, I always say this, and it is true. I have known you forever in a day, I think. How long yeah. have you been here? 16, nearly 16 years. Uh, and you started out in? Recruiting. Recruiting. Yeah. And during that time, you managed to get your degrees, and now yeah. you are an instructor. Mm -hmm. And what Health. do you teach? Health and wellness classes. <sighs> to make everyone well. I try as to. As much as possible. I try to. Okay. Well, we have an event coming up in a, in a couple of weeks, yes. right? Yes. Uh, March 23rd, we are having our annual health fair and wellness walk. And this is, right now, it's strictly for employees and students. Okay. So we encourage everyone to come out. The first 30 minutes will be kind of more like a health fair where they have different things that they can, you know, do. They can get their BMI. They can get their percent body fat readings. These are assessments, health assessments, and then um, blood pressure. Uh, so we'll have some of our students on campus actually providing these assessments for okay. us. Uh, we'll have some of our nutrition students doing this, and we'll also have some of our PTA students doing blood pressure. Oh. And then we'll have Maura come over to do organ donation registration. And we'll also have Claude from Active Health, Blue, Cro Blue Cross Blue Shield, come out and do our employee coaching, wellness coaching, hmm. for about 30 minutes. And okay. then we're going to walk. Okay. Now, so how long is the whole thing supposed to last? One hour total. Okay. So uh, we'll do the first 30 minutes will be strictly the health fair portion. And then the last 30 minutes, we'll start our wellness walk, which is going to be on our Green Mile. Okay. And if so from you've two heard to of three, the Green Mile. Yes. I have heard from of the Green three, Mile. Yes. So we'll start at the fitness center. Okay, mm -hmm. so starting at the fitness center, March 23rd. March 23rd. Okay. Now you have, and as long as I have known you, you have big, been a very big proponent of fitness. Yes. Her lunches would drive me crazy. <laughs> Oh, I've got because you would ones. have you'd have <laughs> this, you'd have this, this and me I'm like I want to eat everything in sight. Yeah. Oh. And you can look at me and tell that I do. Oh, but gosh. you would have and you were you were always so precise in what you're eating, what you're drinking, and even uh, on on holidays. Yeah, I mean I've paid attention would, to portions. Yes, you have always been right. like that. Why is that so important? Well, uh, you know, I think in my opinion, and all the research I've ever done, you know, food is medicine. Yes. Uh, and I'll live by that. Um, you know, as a figure competitor, when I did that and when I was a triathlete, you know, nutrition was, every, it drove everything. You know, my energy levels, uh, it, it, it was the leading factor in my overall health and fitness. So mm -hmm. that's why I pay more attention to food. Um, here lately, I really kind of have been doing a little bit more um, eating unhealthy foods. I've given myself a little bit of a break, which okay. is healthy too, you okay. know, everything in moderation. Sure. However, you know, for me, it's been about just overall health, okay. overall health, you know, long-term longevity, quality of life. That's what I'm, I'm shooting for. Do you think, and, and, and I've said this many times about Americans in general, we, we want we want a pill to fix everything. Correct. We want, it's like, we don't want to, we don't want to change our lifestyle. We don't want to do anything. You know, it's like, I'm thinking of some of these mm -hmm. things. It's like, well, if you eat this, you need to take this pill beforehand. And, and I, in my mind, I'm like, if, if you're getting, ha, eating something and it's causing you trouble, is that your body telling you not to eat that? Sometimes. <laughs> I mean, I would think, I mean, but yeah. okay. But we are always, you know. Instant gratification we, is what we're looking for. Right. How do we get, people to understand that it's more holistic than that. 
Well, I think a lot of it is education, um, and it starts when they're younger, you know, and that's why I drive this to my students almost every day. I explain to them consistency is key. Don't expect fast results. It's a long-term thing. It should be a long-term goal. And, um, you know, there's going to be hiccups along the way. You know, you're not going to be perfect. Don't expect it to be perfect right off the bat and gradually move into something more healthy and sustainable. Mm -hmm. That's really what we're looking for, is something that is sustainable. So you don't have to give up everything at once. It's like, go slowly. That's Just right, go, ahead and go slowly. Give this up first, and then maybe, you know, and right. then, okay, this, if you need to, right. or make the adjustments that you need to make. Right. Why is exercise so healthy for us? Well, we so know that exercise helps, um, you know, get us out of a healthy weight, first and foremost. It helps with having better cholesterol numbers. It helps bring down hypertension and it helps the mind it helps decrease our depression and anxiety and one thing that we're dealing with right now mostly especially with young kids is depression and anxiety and mm -hmm. so we can help that with doing some exercise I think there was a recent study out that said I read this a couple of days ago that said just getting out for like a 20 minute walk mm -hmm. is about the equivalent of taking a, a, an antidepressant Oh yeah, it is my antidepressant medication. medication. No, it, <laughs> if, mine too. If I don't exercise, I can tell um, it does affect my sleep as well. So when I'm getting enough exercise, I sleep better, and mm -hmm. it kind of all goes hand in hand. It does. You know, if you're not there's sleeping, no one little piece. Yeah, there is, right. There's so many pieces to the puzzle that we have to kind of get in there. Mm -hmm. You know, not just about nutrition, not just about exercise, but sleep is also very important. How? Okay, why? Why oh, is well, so I mean, important? sleep does help reset that circadian rhythm. It also helps metabolism. It helps reset your metabolism, gets it back on track. So, you know, if we're not getting enough sleep, it's hard for our bodies to do what it's supposed to do. Mm -hmm. So, And when you're so busy in the world today, and especially our students who are, you know, going to school, studying, working, doing all these things, a lot of times sleep is the first thing that goes. Yes. It and is. I tell them all that I'm like, no, it should not be like that. Right. Sleep is your most important thing. It's, it should be a priority. It should be a priority. So and get rid of the phones. Get rid of the phones. Mm. <laughs> get rid of the phones. Mm, you're going to you get know, a fight over that. Turn but. off all your televisions before eight o'clock. You know, if you're trying to go to bed by, you know, nine thirty, ten, two hours or wear your blue light glasses. Is it important to like distance yourself from the electronics, distance yourself oh, yeah. from the social media, distance Absolutely. yourself from many of these things? It's uh, truly, it's a triggering thing for most people. You know, when you read something on social media or you see something on the TV that kind of gets you going, get your heart rate up, it, it, it just kind of, it, you have a harder time getting to sleep. You have a harder time relaxing. So I try to teach my students to get into a sleep cave momentum, like as far as how you're presenting your sleep area, what you're doing before bed, get into a good routine of relaxation. Mm -hmm. That'll help get you into that position of good sleep. Mm -hmm. Now, so you, I, and I know, I, I tell my students in, their, in the uh, college study skills, shameless plug, uh, college study skills class that I teach that, you know, I, I, all of this is in my stress module, you know, yeah. where we talk about, because you're going to be stressed out, oh, yeah. you know, that's just a, a part of modern life, but what can you do to keep your stress to a manageable level? and then take care of yourself. Yeah, well, there's a lot of things. Number one, you know, make a list of the most important things in your life and the things that you wanna work on first and foremost and kind of knock out the other things that are not so important. That's gonna help eliminate some of those extra stressors. You know, we take on so much right now. We're yes people. But we're becoming no people because we're just putting too much on our plates. Mm -hmm. So that's the number one thing. Well, is I tell students all the time is like learn to say no. Learn to say no. Learn to say no. Be nice about it. Yeah. But especially if you already are, you know, you're already under time pressure and time constraints. Yes. And then somebody wants you to do something else. And you, you know, it puts too much pressure. It's too on much. You. It's yeah. too much. You can't do it. But one thing is for sure is making fitness part of that priority yes. because it does it also enhances every other aspect of our life our relationships our emotional mental health so fitness is a huge 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 thing for us right now we need to start getting into it more well I want to thank you for being here you know yes. how much I love you thank you and uh, 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 it's always great to talk to you you too and we're thank going to you. talk more about this uh, wellness walk that's right okay we'll be right back Meridian Community College for more than 75 years, we've helped students soar. 
establishing the first tuition guarantee program in Mississippi, we put our students first while creating pathways into the workforce and offering a seamless transition to a four-year degree. Now is the time to find your purpose and register today because those who move forward never get left behind. MCC, find your wings. And we are back and we have the wonderful Miss Kim Rush. Hello. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you doing? I'm doing well. <laughs> now you are the official, you are the Director of Advising and Retention? No. I'm the Associate Dean Pardon me. of That's Advising, Retention, and Student Success. Pardon me. It's all good. And my, and my direct supervisor. It's all good. <laughs> it's all good. Things, things change. Yes. So uh, uh, you're the Associate Dean. Okay. But um, we have some... some some things happening. Yes, we have uh, actually a lot going on this we do spring have a lot semester. Going on. We have second intensives that begin uh, March 13th. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of students will pick up a second intensive class to either get back on track, get on track, get ahead. So we have a lot of classes available. So we have both, a four, both, an, both eight week classes correct. available and four week correct, classes correct, available. Correct, correct. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> college study skills. <laughs> And um, pretty soon we will start registering students for our summer terms, which includes May, June, and July, right. and also for um, um, our fall term. Okay. Yes. So the, we have what's called the May Master. Correct. And that's a three week. Three week. Okay. Very intensive. Very but a lot intensive. of students will do that who maybe plan on working in the summertime, and so they'll go ahead and do that three week crunch course, you know, a couple of classes, or maybe just one class, okay. and they'll get that done. And then they'll do maybe maybe one online eight week class in June and July. Okay, okay. Because the typical summer classes, now we've got summer classes that will go all summer. Correct. You said the eight week. Mm -hmm. And then we also have the four weeks. Correct. Which are approximately June and July. Correct, approximately. correct. Approximately. There, there's a little yeah, over, little, 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 little over, room. over, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, there's so much available. Yes, yes. You know? I mean, so many classes available. I actually had a student from Mississippi State that called me yesterday that intends to take our Physics 1 and Physics 2. Physics 1 in June, Physics 2 in July. So we'll get those classes done. So just okay. imagine how much you can get ahead, mm -hmm. you know, get back on track, whatever the case may be for you to be able to take classes and um, be where you want to be in the fall semester. Can you use financial aid for yes. the classes, the second term of this, this semester and May semester and summer? So we definitely recommend students before they come and register for classes that get in contact with financial aid and see where they are financially. But we have many students who are able to use financial aid for second intensive spring, May semester, June, and July. Okay, okay. Now, uh, when will fall, when will people be able to register for fall? So for current students, April the 4th okay. and for new students on um, April the 12th. Okay. So current students, if you're already here, yes. we give you about a week mm -hmm. to come in, Correct. get your classes before we open it up to everybody. Correct. And now is really, cause we're not busy right now in the semester. Now is really a good time to sit down with your advisor, talk about the good, the bad, the ugly, you know, what's going on this semester and be able to make plans for the summer and the fall. Okay. Now, and I'm just going, I'm going to look directly at the camera when I say this, do not wait till the last minute Correct. <laughs> to register for classes, Correct. especially if there are classes that we don't offer a lot of, uh, like physics, I would Correct. imagine, you know, it's not going to be offered yes. a, 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 like every time slot that we get. Correct. So you're going to have to have it at that time, Correct. at a certain time, certain, uh, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's in class or online. Mm -hmm. uh, so make sure that you're registered mm -hmm. for those classes mm -hmm. because sometimes when those are uh, full, yeah. we, you know, it's difficult to get teachers for physics. Mm -hmm you know, who can teach physics. And we also tell students that, you know, a lot of students now, you know, they're in school full time, they're working part time, they may have a family outside of here. If they want the perfect schedule, knowing that they need to be here at eight o'clock and be gone by 11 or 12, mm -hmm. or they want to take a mix of campus and online classes, then they definitely need to get registered early so they can have the, the pick of the litter of all the classes that we have. Because if you wait till the last minute, that will not be your schedule. Correct, <laughs> correct, correct. And no then matter we how also much you want it, that's not going to happen. Yes, and we don't want students be forced into taking an online class. If right. they really know they do better with math, science, English, whatever the case may be in campus, then you definitely need to come to campus early, early and often to be able to get the best schedule that you need. That's right. And I will tell, I tell students this all the time. If it is a subject that you don't feel super confident mm -hmm. in, mm -hmm. don't take it online. Correct. Correct. Just don't take it online. Correct. And you know, uh, we have wonderful online uh, uh, mm -hmm. teachers. Uh, we have a lot of uh, help, but 
it, sometimes, especially, uh, I'm just thinking in math, sometimes you need somebody mm -hmm. sitting and showing you how correct, to do something. Correct, And I'm a visual learner as well, and so, and then uh, someone talking to me and showing me how to do it, I definitely can understand and retain it better than just being, you know, having an assignment online to have to, you know, have to figure out, you know, not by myself, but definitely needing that additional support of a, a campus class definitely helps. Okay. And you were talking about someone from state who yes. wants to come and take physics, so they don't have to uh, presently be, uh, be Correct. Okay, Correct. so if someone wants to take classes this next eight weeks or mm -hmm. four weeks or mm -hmm. whatever, and they're new, they mm -hmm. can still do it, right? Correct. They can go to meridiancc.edu. In the top uh, right corner, click apply. Make sure they apply for the right term. So if it's a March class or an April class, they would apply for spring 2023. If they're coming in the summertime, then they would apply for summer 2023. Does Maymester, is that summer? or? Yes, Maymester is summer. Thank okay. you for, uh, for adding that. And they would apply, get their, their most recent transcript sent to us, and it can be an in-progress transcript from like okay. state, Ole Miss, Southern, wherever. It can be an in-progress transcript. Which means they're not completed that they're that they're not completed with that Correct. class or they haven't completed get that, that class. Get that sent to us, get admitted, shoot me an email, advising at meridiancc.edu, and we'll go from there. Okay. And uh, when they once they send that or once they apply, mm -hmm. they will hear from an yes. advisor within just yes. a, a So a every very step of the way, they'll hear from admissions. And then once they are admitted, they'll come to my email. Okay. Yep. Okay. So the process is very easy. Correct. Okay. So tip, I mean, you can literally get someone in. Correct. Within 24 hours, oh, 48 correct. hours. Correct. 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 Okay. Definitely. We're not, that, right now, we're not busy. Right. So we definitely get you in two to three days. Definitely. So. But that still doesn't mean mean you need to wait correct because it will get busy and <laughs> you won't be able to get in in two to three days right so, yeah. right and so uh, while you've got plenty of time while you, you know the advisors can can uh, uh, devote more time mm -hmm. to you yes. this is the time to do it yes it is oh my goodness how do you how do you stay on top of all of this prayer <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, 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 because the way okay when I started college 48 million years ago you came to class there Correct. was no online you didn't have all these options you did not have Correct. all of these options Correct. you came there were monday wednesday friday classes or tuesday thursday classes mm -hmm. or night classes yes. which met once a week mm -hmm. and that was it yep uh, and there were no holiday classes. Mm -hmm. There were no May masters. Mm -hmm. Now we did have summer, mm -hmm. but summer classes ran the whole oh, summer. June and July. Both June and mm -hmm. July, and that was it. Mm -hmm. You had no options. Now there are so many. Yes. How do you keep it straight? Well, it's not just me. First of all, it is it is not even me. I just deliver the information out. So okay. our, our instruction our department, they do very, very well to get the classes together, get the list together to us, and we're able to populate those. So it's not even me. I'm just delivering it out. But the thing is, we are offering all of these options so we can better serve our community. Yes. And uh, uh, there's no reason that you can't get a schedule Correct. that is going to be... Uh, as I'm not saying easy in terms of the classes themselves, mm -hmm. I'm saying easy in terms of the schedule and the time. Correct. If you're working, if mm -hmm. you've got kids, if you've got, yes. you know, so please take advantage of please this. Please do. Please take advantage of this. Yes. So we've got classes coming the, uh, for uh, the uh, next eight weeks, mm -hmm. the next four weeks, next eight weeks. We've got May Mester. Correct. We've got summer. And fall. We've got fall. Mm -hmm. We've got it all. Yes, we do. Okay. That so. <laughs> <laughs> so tell them your yeah. uh, uh, your the website and uh, name uh, your uh, number again. So our website is advising at meridiancc.edu. Okay. Yes. Okay. And if you have any questions, just shoot it shoot it to that. Uh, 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 there's a, I'm sure there's a place in there where they Correct. ask questions Correct. and Everything. stuff like that. Okay. Oh, definitely. And then you can register. You can get it paid for. You mm -hmm. can do all of this right there. Yes. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much. I'm, I, I have her here every semester, <laughs> usually multiple times, <laughs> yes, because yes. there's so much happening. Yes. But I do appreciate it. Thank you so much. We'll be right back. Since 1996, the MCC Foundation Tuition Guarantee Program has provided students an opportunity to find their potential. Thousands of students have benefited from the program. Over $6 million have been invested in the students who learn and live right here in our community. This program is funded by individuals and businesses who believe in our students, our families, and the economic impact of an education at Meridian Community College. Now is your chance to offer support. Give today at meridiancc.edu slash give. Hi there, my name is Jordan Nix, and I'm here with your MCC update. 
Love Humanities, how about we take the time to congratulate instructor John Reeves on being named Humanities Instructor of the Year. He will be giving a lecture Friday, March 3rd in McCain Theater beginning at 10 a.m. Moving on, who doesn't want to be in the Hall of Fame? I know I do. MCC will be hosting a Hall of Fame ceremony March 8th where they will be recognizing Randy Carroll, Pam Harrison, Deborah Stokes, also being recognized will be Kay Thompson and Michael Thompson as newest members of the talent club. Last but not least, make sure you save the day April 1st for Sip and Savior. Visit SipandSavior.com for your tickets. That's all for your MCC updates. Join us next week. Meridian Community College. For more than 75 years, we've helped students soar. Now is the time to find your purpose and register today because those who move forward never get left behind. MCC, find your wings. On behalf of executive producers Tanisha Clark and Matt Milner, media mogul Josh Taylor, and student producer Terrence Parker, thank you for watching. Hope you learned something. We'll see you next week.